24-7. Welcome. This is Lost in Time. Time. What's up, time travelers? Welcome to Just in Time with me, your special host, Steve from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Really excited about the show, but first I want to make sure that I want to give a, a huge shout out and a big uh, thank you to Razor NZR and Timey322 sent some great emails about time travel, some of their experiences, some of the work that they've been doing, and we have a great show um, planned for today. A lot of great things. I think we've all established that time travel into the future happens all the time. Uh, scientists have proven that, um, that it's possible and that the idea is a fundamental aspect of Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, you'll make it to the future. It's just a question of how fast the trip will be. And to talk about how fast that trip will be, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a new experiment that's going on right now uh, by one of our friends down in uh, Knoxville. Okay, uh, His name is Timothy Quinlan. He's a great friend of our show. And uh, I actually just talked to him yesterday. And what he is working on right now is something that's quite fascinating. He is working with uh, some of the people from uh, the University of Kentucky, from the University of Tennessee, uh, some uh, students there in uh, physics, engineering, engineering, and other uh, areas to really get to learn if we can use black holes or wormholes for uh, time travel. If you don't know what a black hole is, um, basically, we all know that when a star dies, it is given an amount of mass to begin with. As it begins to die, gravity will do its job squeezing the star tighter and tighter, making it more massive and more massive till it actually forms a black hole. We have found uh, this phenomenon. Hey, a lot of people didn't think this was possible. Einstein actually thought this was impossible, but it is, in fact, a real possibility, something that happens every day. We cannot see them directly, but in a way, we can see the way other things around it react with its presence. The idea of space being able to be warped is where the idea of time travel really does become possible. So just think, time travel is possible. A black hole is long enough, it has a gravitational time dilation that can actually be used uh, with the correct physics to actually get us back in time. Now, the one problem that we realize that we do have with this idea of using a black hole is, is getting to said black hole, obviously. Uh, and that's something that will be a whole another podcast we'll talk about um, actually getting there. But the idea behind using a black hole is actually something that was found by a mathematician named Roy Kerr, who proposed the very first realistic theory for actually getting that black hole to rotate. The concept actually hinges on a um, neutron star, which are massive collapsed stars the size of Manhattan, but the mass of the Earth's sun. And what we actually do is we actually take those uh, collapsed stars and we use the energy to actually push us through these black holes, something that I find quite fascinating and something that we definitely need to look more into uh, in our efforts to actually do this sort of thing. Uh, so thanks to Tim Quinlan. I know he's doing lots of great research down there. Hoping to get him on our timeline, um, you know, brought to you by uh, Skype very, very soon. Uh, also, they're doing a lot of great work down in Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. They've carried out a new calculation which actually suggests that the universe cannot start out uniform, go through a cycle of expansion and collapse, and end in a uniform state. It could only start when there's disorders and collapses, backs into disorders, we're finding out that, you know what, the universe does not have linear time. So we need to not look at time in a linear way. We need to think of it as many years ago, there's a guy named Thomas Gold that suggested that there's two arrows um, might be actually linked together. One arrow being the present and the one other arrow being the past. We can link these arrows together. Uh, he thinks that we can do this through quantum physics. The arrow of time are actually linked together uh, using a collapse of the wave function, which happens, for example, when an electron wave moves through a TV, collapses into a point particle on the screen of the TV. Those little waves that you see on a TV, okay, we actually will use our points in time to connect, okay, and we'll actually ride those waves to the past or the future. Now, what we actually obviously need to do next is control where we are or are not transporting to, because obviously... We want to be able to transport to 50 years in the past or 50 years in the future. But we don't want to just jump in the machine and start going and hopefully land somewhere. As you can tell, there's a lot of exciting things going on uh, with the podcast and with time travel right now. Uh, I really just want to say thank you again so much for subscribing to the Just In Time podcast. My name is Steve. Uh, have safe travels. We'll see you sometime very soon. Have a great one.